Triple in Itaqua carried that fear of Judy Polito like a weight around her necks. You have killed the torturers and cut that weight free. Hang on, I'll drive. Much to us. They have helped you improve your right, lives. Let's roll. But Bakatari and his rebels threaten the safety of this way of life. Pinches lobos disfrazados de ovejas. We will do our part, but you must do yours. Do not support Bakatari and his rebels. Report any rebel activity directly to your local Santa Blanca organization. Ready? Open fire. Engaging hostiles. Holy crap! Go parry to the south at the end. We good? Shit got close for a second there. Hell. Good. We all in one piece? Silencio. Marche. Nomad. We're on the ground in Okoro. What have you got for us? Okoro is the heart of cocaine production in Bolivia. The network there was built by El Yayo and predates Santa Blanca by more than a decade. When El Yayo joined the cartel and became the boss of production, he handed Okoro off to his grandson, who goes by the name El Emisario. The Emissary. He spends most of his time outside the province, rubbing shoulders with politicians in Sucre, and greasing the wheels for the cartel. Not really his job, but the guy's something of a charmer. And he figures this is the best way to make his grandfather proud. El Yayo lets it slide so long as Okoro continues to produce. The fact is, the network is so well established that it pretty much runs itself. El Emisario's assistant handles the rest. Get in there, gather intel on Okoro's production...
plants and start fucking things up. That'll put pressure on El Emissario to come back to Okoro and get things back on track before Granddad finds out. When that happens, we grab him and use him to get to El Yeyo. Getting an upload from Bowman. Looks like she's got some intel on El Emissario. You all know El Yayo, highest ranking Bolivian in the Santa Blanca cartel, and their head of cocaine production. But you may not know his grandson, Gonzalo Yana, AKA El Emisario, the Emissary. Yayo taught Emisario everything he knows, how to produce the best polvo in all of South America, how to maintain relationships with the local Bolivians, and most importantly, how to serve your Santa Blanca masters. Emisario looks up to Yayo, would do anything to honor him, to make him proud. Which is exactly what makes El Emisario the perfect target. His greatest fear is shaming his grandfather. If we hit his coke operation in Okoro, he'll come running back to fix things. That's when we grab him. With a little luck, he'll give us everything we need to know about dear old grandpa. Out of the car now. Don't make this harder than it has to be. Hey, Buckle up, this people. This could have been avoided if we hey, had been looking awesome. out for each other. You may not have met him, but you all know Ricky Sandoval, the man at the king's right hand. Man, you'll never let me drive anymore. Just because that ear, one time. The guy handing down justice and shit. You might not know Ricky was acting a little crazy the last couple of months. It happens, right? Everybody gets a little high on their own supply. They get short tempered and crazy strong. But when your homie likes the Volvo too much, you gotta stop and get your amigo some help. If somebody had done that for Ricky, sat him down, talked to him, got to know him a little better, you might have figured out that the motherfucker was an undercover DEA agent. I mean, shit! You look out for your homie, you know if he's gonna roll on you? This next tune is... You yourselves with Bowman's briefing on Santa Blanca's coke production pipeline. People of the top are El Yayo and La Gringa. Yayo's Bolivian, an ex-cocalero turned cocaine producer. Gringa seems to be a disgraced chemist. She used to work for an NGO here in Bolivia before joining up with the cartel. El Yayo was born amidst the Bolivian coca. His mother carried him on her back until he was old enough to go to work for himself. For decades, Yayo picked the leaves Fingers blistered, back aching, feet bleeding. But never, in all that time, did he once extract the alkaloids to make cocaine. To Yayo, the coca leaf was an ancient tradition, going back 8,000 years. A medicine, a culture, una planta sagrada. Of course, the Americanos had a different opinion. They called it Plan Dignidad, the Dignity Plan. Although Yayo was no more than a farmer, un cocalero, his world was left in ruins. With no other means available, he was forced to do the one thing that he vowed never to do. He was forced to produce cocaine. In the end, the Americans' efforts to stop cocaine production created one of the greatest cocaine producers to ever live.
engage targets. Target eliminated. Good shooting. Let's clean up and move on. We'll leave a marker so the Rebels can pick up these supplies later. balls. This is a message from the Free Rebel Forces of Bolivia. By corrupting our government, by terrorizing our people, the cartel has all but taken over our country. Like frightened children, we hide under our sheets, hoping the scary cartel forgets that we're there. It is all right to admit that you are scared. Because when there's fear, there is always hate. And hate will serve you well in our fight against Santa Blanca. Rebel forces have just killed two of the most hated and feared members of the cartel, Yuri and Polito, torturers responsible for dozens of Bolivian deaths. Take your hate and join us in our fight against the cartel. We can rid our country of these foreign criminals. Together, we will create the future we want. Together, we can build a new Bolivia! Let's give him a scare. Let him tell his amigos to fear us. 
Fucking hell. Drag out. Clear on this side. Yo, I got a weapons case here. Check it out. Got a location on a cocaine factory operating out of a converted slaughterhouse here in Okoro. What are we waiting for? Let's go light that shit up. Just one problem. Factory door requires a key code to open. open it. So where do we get the code? According to this, El Emissario's assistant has it. We need to track him down. 